Can somebody please pry this bottle from my frozen hand? Mr. Blue Lemon and Bottle Maker. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Distributed by Fox Distributing, Shelby. on this Tuesday, the 6th of October, 2015. And this is Milton Baker along with you for the Community Profile Program for this Tuesday, and uh, we hope you are doing well. Our best wishes go out to the co-host and executive producer of the Community Profile, Miss Sandy Alexander, who's still recuperating from uh, health problems, and we wish her a speedy recovery and hope she's back here with us real, real soon. All right, with me today on the Community Profile, I am pleased to welcome Linda Mingus. Linda, good morning to you. Good morning, Milton. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming up to the studios today from uh, the Gaston Cooperative Extension Office. Is that correct? That is correct. We're located in Dallas in front of Bigger Staff Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are with the uh, family. uh, tell Tell me your title. Sure. My actual title is a family and consumer science agent, and I am a registered dietitian with Cooperative Extension. And just to give you a little bit of information about us, because I always tell folks when I'm doing programs that we're really a hidden jewel of community resources, and Cooperative Extension is located in every state across the United States. Mm -hmm. And in North Carolina, we're present in each 100 counties along with the Cherokee reservation and provide a variety of services including nutrition and wellness which is the area that I do but we also provide information and resources on 4-H and youth and gardening horticulture natural resources and and tons of additional programs as well yeah the cooperative extension uh agents uh there's more than one agent right that handles various, various areas yeah yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, uh, a few years ago when I was with the Lincoln Radio Station exclusively, uh, we, we we worked in quite uh, close contact with the Cooperative Extension Office there. So uh, so uh, I'm familiar a little bit with what you do, what goes on there, and maybe some of our audience is not, and that's a chance to uh, find out more. Now, if they would like to find out more about the Cooperative Extension Office, take part in some of the programs, et cetera, how would they go about doing that? Well, a great way of doing that is giving me a call. And again, that phone number is 704-922-2111. That's our main office. And we do provide, I have to put in a plug right now, with Medicare enrollment, open enrollments. Mm-hmm. We have wonderful trained SHIP program volunteers, and that stands for Supplemental Health insurance information program Mm -hmm. that are trained volunteers through Mm -hmm. the state of North Carolina Department of Insurance Mm -hmm. that are providing free appointments to individuals who need help looking at Medicare drug plans and they can call the office we're taking those appointments right now and it's all free Um, so great resources they're not trying to sell any type of insurance um, but a great great resource and I always like to share that with folks and folks really Really, really, you do. You need to talk uh, to to someone like that, if not to uh, someone volunteering in the ship program. And like I say, they're these are trained volunteers, and you're not selling an insurance policy or anything. But but talk to someone, you know, because it it's it's for your benefit. Yeah. Yes, and the other program that I would also like to mention is that uh, we provide several programs. 
One is called uh, Living Healthy and Living Healthy with Diabetes, and those are done with in partnership with Extension in our surrounding counties as well mm -hmm. that are available for free, and we provide typically – these programs are about six weeks in length, and in fact, we're starting Living Healthy at the Kaiser Senior Center in Bessemer City. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, wonderful programs, especially for individuals with any chronic condition, from heart health issues to hypertension, diabetes, chronic mm -hmm. pain, cancer. And again, these are what we often call evidence-based programs, mm -hmm. meaning that they're offered across the country mm -hmm. and they've been shown to, to say that they work mm -hmm. and supported by other healthcare organizations. So extension in all of our surrounding counties have a variety of resources. And those are two programs that I like to mention um, for folks who may have health issues please feel free to give us a call. Great resources. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Well, Cotton Ginning Days uh, starts, is it, is it all, this weekend already? It is. Yeah. The, it's this Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Cotton Ginning Days at the uh, in Dallas. And part of what you're doing there is the Something Pumpkin Cooking Contest. Now, Explain uh, what that's all about. Okay, great. I would be glad to. So one of the, the great and fun things I get to do with my job is working with a variety of volunteers mm -hmm. and our community partners. And with that, each year, Cooperative Extension has participated in the annual Cotton Ginning Days event, which is a great turnout, um, a great fun family event. And what we wanted to do this year to kick off and to become a tradition, um, really in, in the same essence and spirit of the Apple Festival um, mm -hmm. that I've worked with Melinda Hauser in mm -hmm. Lincoln County with, um, mm -hmm. a lot of fun and, and a great way to bring people together. But through the generous sponsorship of the Gaston Farm Bureau that we're able to provide cash prizes. We have four categories of entries and along with that with our extension and community association volunteers and looking at really trying to encourage um, folks to spend a little bit of time in the kitchen and it's a great opportunity especially with our youth category to mm -hmm. get our children involved in learning how to prepare foods and being more connected with um, what goes on in the kitchen and where mm -hmm. our food comes from so it's a great way to partner and to have fun and to really expand on the food the the programs and the activities that we do around our food mm -hmm. now it's called the something pumpkin cooking contest so obviously there's a little bit of competition there but it's not all about the the competition is it no it's not and that's a great point as well we really wanted to encourage a variety of folks and again having different categories and i do have some of the recipes that have come in and it's really a great variety of recipes we have some that include for example pumpkin baked french toast mm. we have our traditional pumpkin rolls we have pumpkin cookies we also have pumpkin biscuits with maple maple bacon butter pumpkin scones so it's a great way for folks to be able to share mm. some of their recipes that they've enjoyed and be able to share the recipes within the community it's a lot of fun yeah. you know i was just thinking sitting here while you were, we were talking about this I, I can't think of anything pumpkin related that i don't like <laughs> I love pumpkin, pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread and pumpkin cake. And I've even, now I have never tried it, but I've even heard of pumpkin ice cream. Very have you, good. Have you heard of that? I have, I have, I have not tried that. We will have, I believe in our youth category, the pumpkin milkshake, okay. which I think sounds great. Yeah. And, you know, it's really interesting because so much of, of the variety of what we're doing, especially around pumpkins, you know, a lot of this grows in our own home state mm -hmm. and all of the, the versatility along with the great nutrition that you can get with pumpkin. And so the variety of recipes is a, a great way to include and expand a little bit more yeah. variety variety in addition to the traditional pumpkin pie now the entry deadline has already passed right so, yes. but we want we want the folks to know about this and uh they can uh can they come and view uh, or taste or sample or anything like that? Great. That's a great point. In fact, yes. So we will have the contest. The award recipients will be announced at around noon, noon on Saturday inside the Citizens Resource Center 
and that room location will be what we call the activity room and we'll actually have that on display for all of the entries from about 12 noon until three o'clock in the afternoon. And we'll also, in addition to that, have some of our volunteers and our sponsors, including the Farm Bureau and ECA, our Extension and Community Association, to be able to be there so that folks, if they have questions, they can also, hopefully our goal is that we'll be able to provide copies of all the recipes Mm -hmm. so that people want to pick that up, learn a little bit more about some of our organizations, and also get them excited about next year so that Mm -hmm. we can continue to grow and expand this. Now, uh, this is the first time you've done the pumpkin something pumpkin contest yes it is yes it is hopefully it'll be an annual event absolutely and you know again the fall time of year is just a fun way of getting families together and you know one of the the additional things I'll, i'll let everyone know about part of why our extension and community association is being involved with this is that they're using this to also let folks know about their annual pie tasting day that Mm -hmm. occurs in January Mm -hmm. and right now holiday schedules are already filling up I don't know Mm -hmm. about your calendar but Mm -hmm. mine's starting to look busy with family activities Mm -hmm. and in fact I have grandchildren coming up for the weekend from Carolina Beach to be able to to see what's going on their first Cotton Jenny Days event and again uh, you know great opportunity for um, folks to to be a part and to learn more and again the um, pie tasting day event that's typically held in January Mm -hmm. so during that time of year great way to come in you pay I think it's about five dollars and you get to sample a variety of homemade pies that's made by our members Mm -hmm. and all of those funds all of the proceeds go to their scholarship fund Mm -hmm. that stays within Gaston County and it's awarded to scholarship recipients very good all right so yeah folks mark that uh, on your calendars in January the pie pie tasting day that, that's always fun i know like i said working with the lincoln county agents before pie day was always a very very special time yes it really is a a, a great opportunity and it, it you know hours especially with it being a fundraiser for ECA it goes to a Mm -hmm. great cause so Mm -hmm. we have wonderful volunteers who come together and you know that's one of the great things about cooperative extension along Mm -hmm. with our ECA volunteers we have master gardeners we have our ship volunteers we have 4-H youth and and volunteer leaders as well Mm -hmm. and even our beekeepers Mm -hmm. so you know there's a ton of folks that come together and again help to provide that sense of community for what we do And with the uh, holidays coming up, as you said, calendars starting to get to people are starting to make, uh, you know, plans for this and uh, that. Uh, I'm sure the uh, Cooperative Extension Office will have some holiday uh, events planned. Maybe you can keep us updated on that and we'll get we'll get the word out for you. Absolutely. Uh, we do, you know, again, a variety of programs. I also do a Let's Get Cooking series every month at the Senior Center in Dallas, and mm-hmm. those programs are free. And in fact, next week, we're going to be talking about local honey, and folks will get a chance to sample and taste that, mm-hmm. and also compare it to the taste and the flavors of some of the store-bought honey. Okay. So we're, you know, we're spending and learning more about the importance of pollination with our bees and looking at the nutritional benefits of, of honey. So there's a lot of great programs that we're doing around the holidays every month. So again, give us a call. Take advantage of your local community resources that are free or low cost. Absolutely. There's lots of them. All right. And once again, just uh, just to reiterate, Cotton Ginning Days uh, this weekend in Dallas. Actually, there's events Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but Saturday's the big day and uh, the big something pumpkin cooking contest like i said around noon come into the uh activity room yes inside the citizens resource center and we'll have bright signs to help navigate folks toward that so any questions give us a call all right sounds great um the uh by the way the contest categories main dish everything from soups and salads sandwiches and casseroles then the desserts category cakes, breads, cookies, pastries, and tarts. Uh, Miscellaneous would be beverages, uh, appetizers, low-calorie, etc., and then the youth category. So something for everyone to get involved there. Like I say, the entry deadline uh, has passed, but you can still check out all the goodies and 
get recipes and learn more about what you can do with the with the uh, uh, pumpkins this fall season. Of course, you think of fall, one of the first things you think of are you know harvesting the pumpkins and there's all kinds of pumpkins. Some pumpkins are better for decorating and some better for eating correct yes absolutely and for example the the traditional pumpkin pie pumpkin is really going to provide a lot of flavor and uh, the color of that's a little bit more dull but it's less watery so it's Mm -hmm. great for baking and cooking and you know I also have to share again looking at our local growers that is a great place to go with your your family if you have grandchildren Mm -hmm. to learn about the varieties that they have and to talk about what's grown that's one of the the most in, uh, exciting things to be able to do and again there's tons of varieties and every fall year i think i see new ones yeah and pumpkins are uh, you know around this area they are uh, you know pretty much seen and can be purchased uh, in, in a lot of locations and uh, sometimes those uh, pumpkins can get quite uh, humongous if you, if that's a word there <laughs> they can get quite uh, large in fact i was asking one of our horticulture uh, staff members about how long it takes to grow a pumpkin because i really hadn't thought about that until we were starting to make plans for our something pumpkin contest and most of the growers have mentioned that usually around april and may is mm-hmm. about the time when you have to start growing in order to have pumpkins this okay. time of year so it is a lengthy process but but again, it, it's it's really interesting to see what grows around in our area. Yeah, that's right. All right. So for more information uh, about anything the Cooperative Extension Office is doing, you can call or uh, I'm sure there's a website. Absolutely. And we're online at gaston.ces.ncsu.edu. And if that's incorrect, just Google us. That's just what Google. I do. Yeah, Google. There you go. Everybody Googles these days. All right. Something Pumpkin Cooking Contest. It's uh, say this Saturday, and it's going to be inside the uh, uh, center there next to where all the Cotton Ginning Days activities are, are going on. So you take in two, uh, two big... Uh, events right there and um, i'm sure if you've ever been to cotton ginning days you you know where it's at and what we're talking the building we're talking about but if you're new and haven't been to cotton ginning days like you said there'd be plenty of signs to uh, direct you to the to the center where the uh, something pumpkin contest it's taking place and also there's tons of staff members from parks and rec and additional folks that can help to navigate and direct you Mm -hmm. and take advantage of that and i also believe that they'll have a shuttle service available Mm -hmm. for parking uh to help folks in in with any difficulty if if you have difficulty walking or getting around so Mm -hmm. parking's free a great opportunity to get out i'm always surprised how many folks in our county have not heard of cotton ginning days yeah yeah it's it's uh there's a lot going on at cotton ginning days so quite a few uh quite a different variety of uh items you can you can pick from uh it's kind of like a flea market with antiques and collectibles and useful products and uh, you could probably fill in a lot more details than i crafts yeah crafts (laughs) lots of yeah lots of great things also food vendors live entertainment Mm -hmm. some wonderful entertainment so again some great family family centered events i think they'll have the arena the horse arena that will be designed and set up for children's activities so Mm -hmm. just lots of fun for the whole family all right all right well thank you so much for coming and talking with us and Maybe we can do this again in the future. Great. Thank you for having me. Okay. You keep us uh, keep us informed what's going on with the uh, uh, Gaston County Cooperative Extension Office. And to our listeners in Lincoln, Cleveland County, Catawba County, the, the wide uh, area we cover, you know, check with, check with your local Extension Office, too, about activities that you could get involved in as well. But everybody's welcome to come to, to this kind of something pumpkin contest all right all right folks that's going to wrap it up today and uh, we'll see you next time on the uh, community profile program right here on big o country thanks to uh, linda mingus for being with us today from the gaston county cooperative extension office we'll see you next time